When we know that a graph is acyclic, we can do a couple of interesting things with it that we can't, in general, do to just any old graph. In our recent classes and exercises, we saw that Dijkstra's algorithm can find the shortest paths from a source vertex to all other vertices in, on the order of, the size of v squared operations, with a linear data structure holding the vertices, or on the order of size of v plus size of e log size of v with something like a binary search tree or binary heap holding them, arranged by distance. If we happen to know that there are no cycles in the graph, however, we can do quite a bit better than that. Just observe how we can traverse this graph, discovering new vertices as we go. Every vertex will only be visited once, and if we add the vertices to a work list in a very particular order as we first discover them, we don't need to search for the best vertex to visit next. We can just look at the next one in the work list. Visiting, or arranging, vertices in this way is called a topological sort, and its asymptotic runtime complexity is on the order of the size of v plus the size of e. I mentioned a very particular order in which we need to add the vertices to the work list. We want to add vertices to the work list only after we visited all of their predecessors. We can keep track of this by tracking the in degree of each vertex, that is, the number of edges pointing towards it, and decreasing that number whenever we visit a vertex that has an edge pointing at it. When that number reaches zero, we have considered all the vertices that can precede the vertex in question, so we can add it to the work list. In tomorrow's exercises, I'll ask you to think about and sketch out an algorithm for doing this kind of topological sort. I'll also ask you to analyze its asymptotic runtime performance. Another important kind of analysis for acyclic graphs is critical path analysis. We've previously said that directed acyclic graphs can be used to model things like software build dependencies, but they can also be used to model dependencies in project management. This graph shows a representation of tasks that might be included in a project, and how long each task will take. Each vertex represents something that we need to spend time doing. Each edge represents a dependency from one task to another. For example, you can't raise funding from angel investors until you've written a proposal. To do a critical path analysis, we'll start by converting this graph into a representation that shows milestones instead of tasks as vertices. Now every vertex represents the completion of some part of the project, and the edges represent how long it will take to get from a previous milestone to this one. We can calculate the earliest possible time for each task to be finished by analyzing the shortest paths from the start vertex to every other vertex. Because it's an acyclic graph, this should be a linear time operation. Once we know how soon the entire project can be completed, we can work backwards to find out the latest possible time for each milestone to be completed without affecting the overall completion time. Then we can calculate schedule slack, how late each milestone can be without delaying the overall project. Some milestones will have zero slack, and a path that goes through only zero slack milestones is called a critical path. If anything on a critical path is delayed, the entire project will be delayed. Tracking critical paths is an important task for project management software. We've now seen how acyclic graphs provide us with the opportunity to do more, or to do it in less time. We can find the shortest paths from a vertex in an acyclic graph in linear time, and we can also perform critical path analysis. Let's look at these in more detail in our class together.